President Trump thanked House Speaker Nancy Pelosi on Twitter this morning for her anti-impeachment stance. But why aren't the rest of the Democrats listening to her? Joining me now, Kentucky Congressman and House Oversight Committee member Thomas Massey is back. Welcome back, Congressman. Hey, thanks, Kennedy. You know, it's almost like Nancy Pelosi came out and said, there is no Santa Claus. We've been lying to you for two years. And then Adam Schiff rushed in and some of the other members to assure everybody that, there, oh, no, there is a Santa Claus. We saw him eat the cookies, and there's some hoof prints from the reindeer <laughs> outside. <Yeah. you> know? <laughs> No, it's, uh, it's really interesting to me how so many Democrats are hanging on to this impeachment fantasy. And e even Al Green has said, well, you know, we have to impeach him because leaders said that he's unfit. It's like, what leaders? How is he unfit? What crimes? Like, specifically, what has he done to justify impeachment? Because, believe me, Nancy Pelosi and Steny Hoyer despise the president. But they're smart enough to know that simply resisting him only makes him stronger. It's like giving antibiotics to a superbug that is now <laughs> consuming them and, instead of succumbing to them. Well, you know, uh, Pelosi, Pelosi, like I said, she said there that the Santa Claus is not coming. But the problem is this is one of the biggest fundraisers for the Democrats, the, the I word. And they don't want to give up the I word for the fundraising and to motivate their base. But now that the elections are over, and this is really about President Trump's reelection. And she knows it's the third rail. If they do impeachment, if they start impeachment hearings, he's going to win in a landslide. Yes. I think, you know, he would win today, in my opinion, against any of the field that they have. But if they do the I word, if they try to impeach him, it's going to be game over and he'll be the, the he'll be reelected. I also think, you know, we talked uh, the other week about the hearing with Cohen in it. That was supposed to be their cornerstone yeah. that they were going to lay for the foundation of impeachment. And it crumbled right in front of their eyes. Yes. And, and now uh, Mark Meadows and Jim Jordan have referred him to the Justice Department for further criminal inquiry. So he could be uh, he could be facing an even harder time legally than he was before he went and visited your committee, where he had a, a very difficult time answering some of your pretty basic questions. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting because his attorney, Lanny Davis, has said two opposite things. So even Lanny Davis has gotten caught up in this lie, and he says, there are two Michael Cohens. Mm. Well. Well, I think we did put him in a difficult position, and it was six hours long. But his false testimony that he gave was in the first five minutes he told a lie. I mean, it was in his written testimony. He said he never asked for a pardon, and he wouldn't accept one. The problem is he did ask for a pardon, and he would definitely accept one. So they had to fix that. You know, it reminds me of a scene in uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, sure. when the adult said that the, uh, the factory would never open again, that it was closed forever. And Charlie said, wait, it's open right now. What do you mean? You said it was closed forever. And the adult said, uh, Charlie's mom said, well, sometimes when adults say forever, they mean a long time, just a very long time. Yeah. So Cohen, when he said never, he meant, well, not today I haven't asked for a pardon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and you know, he's, he's sort of uh, compressing and, and splitting up the timeline. And that's why Davis was saying, well, there are two Michael Cohens. The old Michael Cohen who told a bunch of lies and was a really bad person and went to a horrible law school. He's the one who asked for a pardon. But the new Michael Cohen who always tells the truth, he did never ask for a pardon, not even once ever. Well, we shouldn't have expected anything less. I mean, the guy's going to prison for lying to Congress. It was a joke yeah. to bring him in front of us to start with. Um, so what do you make? This is very serious, the grounding of the Boeing 737 MAX fleet. What do you make of that? Well, I'm on the Aviation Subcommittee, the Transportation Committee, and tomorrow we're going to get a briefing on that. Um, I've talked to somebody in the aviation industry who knows pilots that fly these planes. And the domestic pilots are actually very confident in the planes. They have no problem with them. I, I'm looking forward to seeing the data tomorrow that convinced them to ground these planes. I hope it's not an overreaction. I mean, it needs to be based on, on data and science and evidence. And, and maybe they're just being careful because they are saying that uh, the, the flight track that they have looked at from the two crashes within five months seem similar enough that uh, something 
might be uh, a miss with the, the planes. So, the, you know, it, it may be something that they have to fix. Hopefully they're able to do it quickly so they don't have to get those stinky old replacement planes, which <laughs> are uncomfortable and god well, awful. Well, more likely than not, it's a pilot error or mm -hmm. a maintenance issue. Yeah. Uh, let's keep that in mind. So going forward, but you know, it's I guess they're they've decided better safe than sorry. Maybe that's the right path. Yeah. We'll get to see that information Not tomorrow. Not everyone likes to live dangerously like you and me, Congressman <laughs> no. Massey. Thank you very much for being here tonight. Appreciate it.